Welcome back to the Building My Dream Shop series. Uh, we took a little break, but we're back now and we're starting it up. We got moved into our farmhouse, which is right here. It's done. We're actually moved in and the shop is a mess because we have it kind of as our transitional storage right now. But today is garage door day. The crew showed up early this morning. We are doing residential garage doors and one is going to be powered with a side garage door opener and then the other one, which will be the 10 foot door on the shop side, primarily shop side, will be a manual just roll up door with no motor on it. So we're gonna get these things installed and hopefully the look that we're going for will come together and it'll be perfect. I love it when a plan comes together. As you can see behind me, the residential garage doors are installed. They worked perfectly. Um, before we get the outside view, I'll show you guys exactly what we installed, the track system that they put in, the type of garage doors we're using, and just a couple of the highs and lows on the insulation process since there wasn't a whole lot of information out there when I was researching on residential garage doors installed in a metal building. It is a stamped steel carriage style garage door. Um, it is super basic, no insulation. They come in white. Um, it's pretty much the exact same as you would normally see um, in your normal garages. They just have the sections that are bolted together. And this is a nine foot tall door. So what they did, I pretty much bought an extra section up top. I'll break the cost down at the end of this video if that's something you're interested in. Uh, I'll have everything laid out and tell you guys exactly what I paid for this setup. Um, on top of that, we have the, like I said, these are nine foot doors, both of them. There is a 10 foot door over there. This one's gonna be more uh, for the shop. So that'll be, that'll have a car lift right here in the center. And then this door will roll up. Um, that is a manual door. I did not put a motor on that since I probably won't be opening that one very much. Uh, this side is where the wife will be parking. So this is a 16 by nine. So as far as motor goes, we ended up going with the side mount LiftMaster 8500. Um, that is your pretty standard insulation on side mount openers. Now I didn't have to upgrade on motor size uh, for the, the extra foot on top of the door for the nine feet because standard garage doors is seven feet. If you get a tall one, it's usually eight feet. Uh, nine feet goes into your commercial shop settings, which some of the companies tried to quote me at that. Um, the company I ended up using just, you know, they added what the one section like I asked for to make it nine feet. And then we're using the residential garage doors. The button was installed as well. It is right here, has a temperature gauge on it, and it does have a light as well with the remote button in the car. I uh, haven't hooked the light up yet because we don't have power. So we're actually running a bunch of drop cords in here. So that is the motor that we used. Um, they mounted it with pretty much the, uh, um, the same bracketry that they used to mount the tracks. And they just kind of custom made everything. That is the only hiccup that I found on the metal buildings when they're mounting these is there is lack of side mounting material right here. Uh, normal garage doors, you have, I think you have a two by six that pretty much runs vertically up each side of the wall and that's where everybody bolts their tracks and everything too. So they have to get a little creative 
when they're bolting these up in the metal building. Now the track system they installed is pretty basic as well. Um, it's like you see in every other garage, it's kind of like your erector set looking uh, nine, 90 degree angle um, metal bracketry at there. And they actually did pretty good. They ran it from uh, one truss to the actual wall. And I know this wall right here, he said he wanted to connect on this wall here because it is pretty much like your load bearing wall. So he said that'll really take a lot of weight off of it and distribute it so it's not just pulling down on this one truss. And then he grabbed two truss, two trusses on this side as well as you can see that cross piece right here. And then he just dropped down from the center and then the tracks just come up just like normal. And they do come up about a foot above the actual opening on the door. So that being said, when the garage doors are up, they're actually about nine and a half feet off the ground. Uh, the shop side is the same way. As you can see, they did, looks really nice up there as well. And then they have the lift spring mounted, similar fashion with the erector set mounts, I pretty much call them. They did do limited mounts on the side, on the left and right track, just because there wasn't any backing. Um, he said, if he wanted, if I wanted to, he could have put the two by six wood up there. It would have been a little bit extra. I wasn't really prepared with the holidays. We were kind of, everything was backed up, but I'm like, let's just get it installed because I'm not sure if I want to, you know, eventually put some insulation and some backing on these walls. So I really like having the side motor or no overhead motor at all. I'd rather it be, be manual on this side. Um, the reason being is because as if you can notice up top here, there is no track, there's no pulley system, there's no chain, there's no screw hanging down the center. That way, even though the tracks do hang down right here and on the other side, I will still be able to put a car lift right in the center of the shop and lift a car right in between those tracks. Um, I measured it, everything out. As you can see, our Trans Am is right here, patiently waiting to get, to get worked on. But this is the car lift side where I'm standing. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much center it right here in between uh, the garage door, left and right. And then I will also center it from front to back in the building going this way. So I will actually have the two post lift going right up in the center. And I measured it, it should fit, even with the garage door up, with a car on the lift, it'll fit. Like any, if you have the, like this Trans Am for instance, the hood will go right up and it'll stop right under this 10 foot door raised up. If you have a truck, obviously you're gonna have to, worst case scenario, I figured, you can, raise, you can still raise it up, but you'll have to have this garage door shut. That's not a big issue at all. So that's why I definitely chose the manual. You know what, I'll just lift it up by hand and then I won't have to sacrifice my ceiling and have that big old track hanging down in the center. So that is the inside. Let's go check out the outside. And having this little guy for a pretty big metal building, it's a pretty cool feeling. So this is pretty much your standard, cheapest residential garage door you can get. They pretty much come in these panels, like I said earlier, and this one is called a stamped, um, uninsulated carriage door. And it looks kind of like that, has that farmhouse carriage look. And these brackets that you see on here, those are just for looks. Those are not functional, they're not hinges or anything. They're about a $35 kit you buy, and then you actually just bolt them right on the door and they're super thin and cheap metal, but when you're when you're backed up away and you're looking at it from a distance, it just looks so much better than your standard garage door. So there is the 16 foot door on this side, and as you can see, the 10 foot door is right here. So the whole look of the building completely changed when we put those doors in. Now for most people, you can still see it's a metal shop. Of course it's a metal shop, but with the residential garage doors, my opinion, it's so worth it. And given the fact that it's not much extra cost-wise to get residential garage doors with your motors versus your steel roll-up doors right now, cost difference. So for these doors, I know you guys have waited patiently enough, so I'll break you down on the price. For this whole system, both these doors, everything installed, motor, everything, I paid four grand. Um, now I'll break that down into details in the description below, and I'll also have the, um, the installer 
and the company listed down below. I don't do that for everybody. I'm not sponsored. If I use a product and find someone who is good and I would recommend them to my friends and family, then you will find their contact information in the description. That does not mean I'm sponsored by any means from this company. There is some different options with the motors, you know, like side mount versus your up mount. And then you can, you can also do high lift tracks and that's like a high radius uh, track system for the doors and they'll actually match the pitch of the metal roof so your residential garage door will actually go up and it'll actually tuck back and follow the truss line on your metal building that's pretty cool but it's about four hundred dollars per door upgrade and like i said before with my measurements on my car lift um, i didn't really think it was needed you know worst case scenario i'll shut my garage door if i'm lifting anything up heavy so that being said, that is the residential garage doors installed into the metal building. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That is another item complete on building a dream shop series that week. And that project definitely was probably one of the smoother ones that I've dealt with, with this uh, metal building. The guys showed up, like I said, they worked great. Everything was easy. They didn't really need me much. I just kind of got in their way and tried to film some, as you guys saw, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helps you guys out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you have any opinions, positive, negative, whatever, leave a comment below. I'll love hearing all the feedback. So if you guys enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and we will see you next week on the building a dream shop series.